finally, back in the mountains. I feel like I'm back to my army roots. Well, this is my spring trout trip to the mountains. And today, we're gonna fish the Rose River in the Shenandoah National Park. You're in for a beautiful sight, and maybe I'll even catch a few fish. This is the perfect fly fishing river, and the perfect implement to use is a Tenkara rod because you're not really casting that far. Now, back in the day before I became a fly fisherman, I actually fished this with spin gear, and it ended up being a little bit frustrating. Your typical spin cast is only going to be, you know, 10, 15 feet. So it's sort of an exercise in frustration. So here's the start of the trail. You can see it's well marked, it's rocky. And what I like to do is walk in about a half mile and then we'll cut down to the river. You can start fishing right at the trailhead. You can go down this hill right here and you can hear the river down there. That's what it looks like back to the trailhead. So now I got to catch up with Dick before he gets too far ahead. You know, the last time I was here years ago with my friend Lon, we left the truck and we're walking down this way. And I realized I'd forgot to bring my bear spray with me. I always had my bear spray with me. So of course, in this trip, we encounter a bear. Lon was fishing in back of me and he radios up to say, hey, Steve, I just saw the biggest bear of my life and it's heading right to you. So no problem, I thought. Reached down to my waist to get a hold of the bear spray and it's not there. I realized I left it back in the truck, but I did have my air horn. So I started honking on that a little bit and sure enough, I saw a big black blob tear off in the opposite direction. So be prepared for bears if you come to the Shenandoah National Park. Okay, time to stop talking and get to where we can start fishing. As you walk up to where you're gonna cut down to the river, you're tortured by the sound of the river below. And every once in a while, you can look through the trees and you can see how great the water looks. Boy, there's plenty of water here, Dick. There's nice pools down there. Once we get across this bridge up here, the trail should take a bend to the right, and then that's where we'll cut over to the river. Oh, what a glorious day. Look at that. There's got to be some nice six-inch brookies down in there. <laughs> Maybe I ought to read my own blog post sometime. This bridge right here in back of me is 1.19 miles from the trailhead. And it's after this bridge that you actually want to move to the river. And the reason is that if you go into the river right from the trailhead, you're captured in this canyon right here. While there's good fishing down there, you're not really going to get out until you get up to here. I've never fished this little side feeder, but I bet it has some pocket water up there it's got to have some brook trout in it. So, time to take a break. I'm an old man, 70 years old, before I dive down and get to fishing. You'll come up from the bridge, and then you'll see the trail move away from the river and move up. And there's this little sign right here with a side path going down. This is where you want to come down to the river. And, appropriately enough, it discusses the fishing regulations right here. Then when you walk down to the river, this is what you see. Isn't this spectacular? Before I touch a fly, I kind of mess my hands up in the dirt to get all human scent off me. Walking through the woods along the stream, I sometimes you just pick the wrong side to go up. I should be on that side over there, down near the water. I've got a cliff right here that I gotta figure out how to get down. 
Okay, here's the first pool. Let's see if there's anybody moving in here. I'll start over here at the tail and then I'll work up. Nothing. Hopefully I'll be able to pull something out of here. Nothing moving yet. Perfect cast. Perfect drag free drift. If I don't get a hit on a dry after this pool, I'm going to switch to nymphs. Okay, that looks like a really nice set of pools right there. I'm going to sneak up and see if there's anybody home. There are ants crawling all over the place. Once I get tired of trying my nymph here, I'm going to switch to some terrestrials. Maybe that's what they're hitting. Nothing here. I'm 1.65 miles from the truck, and here is what the river looks like. You can see as we go up in elevation, we have more and more of this pocket water that is a quick stop to fish you know once you've thrown four or five drifts through there you may as well move on i'm hoping that there's a big stretch right above that log up there that'll allow me to focus a little more i'm thinking as i look way upstream that that might be the special cave that i need to wait for dick so he can fish because there's a lot of fish stacked up in there the last time I was here. Okay, I'm going to sneak up here and fish just from behind this log. Check this out. I got to sneak up on this. There's got to be a fish in here. It wasn't meant to be at this pool right here. It's deep. It's probably about five feet deep, which is deep for the Rose River. Had a good strike on this green woolly bugger. Time for some close combat. This looks like it's about four feet deep. I've got my woolly bugger on there. Let's see if it goes for it. I'm gonna get this pool and this next one up and Dick is gonna go up above. Let's see if we can actually catch a fish finally. Another beautiful spot here on the Rose River. Look at that. You gotta walk to get here though. 1.75 miles from the truck. Nope, it's not the cave, but it's just as good. Check out that pool. That'll be the last place we fish today. We're about 1.8 miles from the truck. Well, I take that back. This is the feature I've been calling the cave. You can see the water comes out and it's nice and cool underneath that ledge. Well, this will be the last place I'm going to fish today. So I'll flip a nymph up under there, see what happens. You can imagine what a great place that is in the summer. No joy here at the cave, but it was good. I had one hit. Well, we've come full circle. That was about 2.6 miles from the truck back to where we left the trail to go down to the river. When you get up to that cave part, what you got to do is just kind of cut across on the contour. You can see it from my map, if I can figure out a way to post it, until you hit the fire road again, because you don't want to have to bushwhack all the way back to the trailhead. Well, we were skunked today. Good day of fishing, bad day of catching, but Two army guys out in the woods enjoying the beautiful scenery. I had three hits. 
nothing brought to hand. So the fish are here. They're just not hitting today. I ran into Prentice on the river. He and I exchanged emails a number of years ago when he found someone was pirating my book and I was able to get that taken care of. So it was nice to meet him. I'm gonna try and track him down and send him a copy of my new book, Hacking Fly Fishing. It's, it's a small world when you're running the people out in the middle of nowhere. That's amazing. He camped out uh, right here at the intersection that we're just leaving and fished a little bit up and down. But again, he didn't have any luck either. And frankly, he looks more like more of an expert than I am. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed all the scenery of the Rose River. Dick and I are going to shuffle on back to Culpeper, have a beer, and take it easy.